it's about time to uh, brief you on what the Chakwera administration uh, is doing. So we are very excited and we are very glad that we are able to have this conversation uh, this morning. This is how we will proceed. We will have uh, uh, the President's diary for the past uh, one week and also uh, how the pres uh, President Chakwera's diary is looking uh, like in the week to come. And uh, this will be done by the executive assistant to the president, who is also the director of communications here at the State House, uh, Sean Camponden. And after that, we will be able to take some of your questions. But uh, once again, thanking you for joining us this morning. Allow me now to call upon uh, Mr. Sean Camponden to give us the presidential uh, brief. Thank you, Brian, uh, Mr. Press Secretary, for the introduction and uh, warm good morning to Malawians everywhere from Sanja to Chitipa and uh, members of the press joining us for this uh, particular briefing. Uh, it is my honor this morning to bring you up to speed on the activities the President undertook over the course of the past week, as well as activities that he has on his diary in the week to come. But before I begin today, is uh, Monday the 12th of April and uh, this evening marks the uh, beginning of uh, the holy month of Ramadan which will be observed by Muslims all over the world in general but also here in Malawi in particular and uh, because of that tomorrow uh, Muslims will be observing uh, a, a holy fast for a period of 30 days and uh, it will end with the observance of a uh, celebration of Eid al-Fitr. And uh, the president wanted me to convey to Muslims all over the country as is taught in the Muslim faith. And so the president conveys his best wishes during this time and wishes all of the uh, Malawians who are members of the Islamic faith uh, the very best. Having said that, uh, let me update you on uh, what the President did over the course of the past week. Uh, the President on Monday the 5th uh, had a birthday uh, and so he got together with his family, his children and grandchildren uh, at a private uh, function uh, that uh, uh, took place here at Mtuntama. And the President uh, conveys his uh, thanks to Malawians all over the country who sent him messages of goodwill uh, on that occasion. He's very grateful for it. There was a story in social media that uh, alleged that the president's birthday cake cost taxpayers money to the tune of 50 million kwacha. I can uh, confidently inform all Malawians that that story is false and uh, the president had a pretty standard cake that was uh, baked by his friends and uh, at no cost to the Malawian people. But he is very grateful that um, so many of you thought of him and expressed uh, happy birthday wishes to him and he wanted to convey his thanks. Later that day, um, even though it was a public holiday following the Easter weekend, Good Friday and Easter Sunday, which fell on April the 4th, making April the 5th a public holiday, the president still uh, went to the office in order to have an engagement with um, the commissioners of the Malawi Electoral Commission. Uh, Malawians might wish to know that the Malawi Electoral Commission is embarking on an exercise to demarcate, re-demarcate, I should say, the boundaries of the constituencies and wards across the country. Uh, the laws of the land require that this exercise should take place every five years. But previous administrations had neglected this uh, legal requirement, and the last time that the redemarcation exercise was done, believe it or not, was in 1998. Now, since the president campaigned heavily on the rule of law, he has seen to it that under his administration, this anomaly is corrected. And so the Chakwera administration has already injected 500 million kwacha from the Treasury to the operations of the Malawi Electoral Commission specifically for this exercise. Because over the course of 
21, uh, I believe actually it's uh, 23 years since the last time this exercise was done. There have been changes in the demographics and populations of the country uh, due to movement of peoples as well as uh, uh, deaths and births. And so the constituency uh, boundaries need to reflect uh, some of the changes that have taken place over the course of the past two decades. And so the president met with the chair of the Malaya Electoral Commission, Justice Chifundo Kachale, as well as the commissioners, in order to, um, uh, to weigh in on the necessity of these and to give his thoughts, uh, not only as head of state, but also in his capacity as president of the Malawi Congress Party as the Malawi Electoral Commission begins its exercise of engaging various political parties to get their views. And so um, uh, the president had that engagement that Monday afternoon. On Tuesday, the 6th of April, uh, the president uh, met uh, with uh, two cabinet members, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Honorable Eisenhower Ngaka, and, um, and also the uh, Minister of Lands, Honorable Kenzi Sukwa. And, uh, and so uh, the president uh, uh, was very grateful for the opportunity to be briefed on some of the progress being made on the policies related to land in the country, but also uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs is briefing to prepare the President for a foreign trip that he was to take uh, a few days after. On uh, Wednesday, the 7th of April, the President uh, met with uh, the Malawi Human Rights Commission. In fact, he hosted a swearing-in ceremony here at Mtuntama uh, to swear in uh, um, uh, Ms. Chikondichi Josie for the position of um, uh, Commissioner of the Malawi Human Rights Commission in order to uh, complete uh, the constitution of that body. As you know, Malawi Human Rights Commission is a constitutional body and so certain operations could not take place until they had a full uh, quorum, and the president saw to it that that was uh, resolved. Following the, um, uh, the passing of the chair of the uh, Malawi Human Rights Commission, the late Reverend Patrick Zemperi, which is what created the need for, um, uh, for a new commissioner there. And so there was a swearing-in ceremony here presided over uh, Honorable Felix Mlusu, uh, in order to get an update on some of the um, emerging issues with regard to budgetary expenditure as well as preparations for the next budget, um, as well as uh, the usage of public financing by various institutions. And so the President was getting briefed on a, a number of things uh, related to that um, so that the President could give his um, direction to the Minister of Finance as to what to do uh, about that. The President on Thursday, the 8th of April, uh, left the country and uh, flew out of Kamuzu International Airport. I believe he flew out at 7.30 in the morning that day and uh, went to Maputo, Mozambique. He was invited there in his capacity as incoming chair of SADC as well as, um, uh, as a neighbor, as well as a, uh, apologies uh, to all of you viewers for the interference. If I could ask all of the journalists who are on the Zoom platform to mute uh, their, uh, their devices, please. Um, and now if you allow me to proceed. The President flew out of Kamuzu International Airport at 7.30 on the morning of Thursday the 8th to travel to Maputo, Mozambique for the Double Troika Summit for SADC Heads of State. Now, Malawi is not a member of Troika, uh, but because of the President coming in as SADC Chair in August this year, as well as the <coughs> fact that the uh, security issues related to the developing situation in uh, Mozambique with regard to the terror activities there, 
uh, Malawi being a neighboring country, uh, the Troika members felt that it was important to engage President Chakwera so that he could be part of those deliberations. And so uh, you may have seen that in some of the images coming out of Mozambique, the president was there and there were others where the president wasn't present because there were two sorts of things happening at the same time. The Troika members had meetings of their own and then there were other meetings where they involved the president. Um, and so the president uh, came back from Mozambique that night, I believe uh, he landed at Kamuz International Airport at 9 p.m. Um, or thereabouts on the same day. On Friday, the 9th of April, uh, the president had a virtual meeting with uh, um, Mr. Santiago Mayado, who is the uh, global president of um, Compassion International. Compassion International is going to be uh, setting up uh, a chapter here in Malawi for the first time. They operate in dozens of countries around the world providing relief and uh, other kinds of assistance to children, especially living in abject poverty in order to um, lift their plight. And so the president of uh, Compassion International who met President Chakwera two years ago at the uh, International Prayer Breakfast in Washington, D.C., where they met and uh, built rapport and established a, uh, a friendship when he heard that uh, President Chakwera had been elected by the Malawian people to, uh, uh, to run the country, they felt excited because they feel that uh, uh, President Chakwera is, uh, uh, is very uh, intent on uh, uh, fighting against poverty in this country, and so they wanted to bring their assistance here. So the President met him that morning of Friday the 9th, and, um, and then uh, the President also met with uh, uh, a group of pilots uh, from uh, the good old Air Malawi. The President is reviewing the whole situation related to flagship airlines here in Malawi, uh, and so he's getting, getting perspectives from various stakeholders, and that day he, he met of April. Uh, the President uh, has met with uh, some uh, investors from New York, who are interested in partnering with the administration in expanding the rural electrification program as well as other um, aspects of uh, wealth creation for rural communities. And so uh, accompanying the president in that meeting was uh, the chief advisor to the president on rural development as well as the chief advisor to the president on manifesto implementation and strategy uh, Mr. Adamson Kandawire and Mr. Christian Mabanda, respectively, who uh, had brought in these uh, investors uh, to the president at the president's directive and request. As we speak, the president is currently in a meeting with the secretary to the president and cabinet uh, on cabinet matters. And so, uh, uh, the President is not uh, making any further comment on Cabinet matters until he is ready to address the nation on the same, either personally or through his Secretary to the President and Cabinet, as per his prerogative granted to him by the Constitution. And so the President thanks the Malawian people for their patience uh, and uh, gives you his assurance that uh, uh, he is um, uh, keen to uh, communicate with you on the same uh, as soon as he is uh, ready. This afternoon the President will be speaking to the BBC uh, who are keen to have the President featured on Focus on Africa to hear the President's thoughts on the passing of uh, His Royal Highness the Duke uh, of Edinburgh who passed uh, a couple of days ago. And uh, the President has conveyed his uh, message of condolence to the Queen, to the British people, as well as to the British Prime Minister, Honorable Boris Johnson. And so the British uh, Broadcasting Corporation has uh, requested to speak to the President, and so you should be able to catch that interview uh, within the course of either today or tomorrow. Um, a few more items uh, related to the President's engagements in this coming week. Um, following on 
the President's uh, desire to uh, address some of the emerging crisis with regard to the airlines here in Malawi. He is going to be meeting the Chairman of Malawian Airlines this coming Wednesday, the 14th of April. And, um, uh, and the President is quite keen to see that uh, the situation with Malawian Airlines is duly resolved because uh, uh, the President uh, knows that this affects uh, many things, including trade and the movement of peoples and goods uh, between Malawi and other countries. So um, on Thursday, uh, the uh, 15, uh, 15th of April, the President is going to meet with the acting CEO of ADMARC with the uh, situation regarding the sale of maize and the purchase of maize from farmers. As you all know, the uh, Affordable Inputs Program has been a resounding success and the President is very keen to see that even though the harvest is projected to be good this year, that um, there is no wastage of any of that crop and that also farmers get a fair deal uh, on, their, on their produce. And so the President is staying on top of uh, the management of that situation. So he will be meeting with the uh, with Miss uh, Matondo, who is the acting CEO of Admark, uh, to follow up on the same and uh, uh, and see what the situation is with that. Uh, on Friday, the president plans to uh, meet uh, with uh, some of the leaders from the Malawi Defense Force, and so he's quite keen to. Um, uh, have a briefing with them, but also just to socialize with them in his capacity as Commander-in-Chief of the Malawi Defense Forces. Those are a few of uh, the engagements that the President is going to be having this week that he wanted me to update you on so that you can continue to uh, stay informed of what your administration and your President is doing, because he considers it an honor that you allowed him to serve in this capacity and he considers it a civic duty to keep you updated on what he's doing. With those few remarks, I thank you, and I leave you in the hands of the Press Secretary. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much, Director. And uh, we will now take uh, some of your questions. Please identify yourself and the media house you are representing. Let's take some, um, some of your questions. Let's have a question from uh, the Times. Times, you have the floor. Jameson? Jameson Chauluka, you have the floor. Mr. Jameson Chauluka, you have the floor. Hello, Brian. Yes, I can hear you, and you have the floor. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Jameson. Right, Brian, you have the I floor. I have a uh, uh, few questions. Uh, the first one, the, uh, the Director of Communication has uh, said, of course, that uh, the President will not be commenting on the issue to do with uh, Cabinet. But uh, this is still something which Malawians have been expecting uh, to hear. Question we have from National <coughs> Audit Office. But uh, the National Audit Office says that uh, they are not going to give us the report at least until such a time it is debated upon by Parliament. Uh, my question to you again is, uh, when is uh, uh, President Chagwera going to give us the report because the Malawians are also looking for it and uh, the Human Rights Defenders Coalition is threatening to go on the streets demanding the same. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chauluka, for your uh, two uh, questions. Uh, the first one, as the director has alluded to, the president uh, has no further uh, comment uh, on, uh, in as far as cabinet is concerned. Um, I also want you to understand that uh, 
it is the prerogative of the president uh, to hire and fire a cabinet. And uh, when the president is ready uh, to give the Malawi nation a new cabinet, uh, in exercise of the powers that the constitution uh, gives the head of state and government, uh, he will uh, then exercise uh, those powers to hire and fire cabinet. But what we should also bear in mind is that uh, we have a cabinet now. So the current cabinet is still working. We still have uh, ministers and deputy ministers. It's only the Ministry of Transport and Ministry of uh, Local Government uh, that don't have uh, uh, cabinet ministers, but they are deputy ministers also uh, in those uh, uh, portfolios uh, working as we speak right now. So um, the president, when he decides to exercise his uh, uh, prerogative, uh, he will let the nation know. That's the, uh, what we can say on uh, the cabinet. On the, the issue of the 6.2 billion kwacha, uh, you should also know, you should also know, Mr. Chauluka, and indeed uh, fellow journalists, that uh, it is President Jaguera uh, who charged the National Audit Office uh, to make sure that they make an audit on the same. It is President Jaguera uh, who interdicted uh, the controlling officers. Uh, it is President Jaguera uh, who said that something uh, needs to be done in as far as your money uh, is concerned. So uh, what I can say is that as soon as the National Audit Office uh, has completed uh, this exercise, they will give it uh, to the relevant authorities, and then the, rele the relevant authorities uh, will do the needful. But as far as the, uh, the president is concerned, uh, he has not yet received uh, the findings of that audit. And when he, the audit is done, uh, the relevant authorities will do what is uh, uh, needed. Also, if HRDC and other interested parties have any questions uh, at metams or whatever they have, they should channel those concerns uh, to the National Audit Office because it's the National Audit Office uh, that was mandated to make sure that uh, uh, this audit is done. National Audit Office being an independent body, it is the uh, President's view uh, that uh, the Presidency should not uh, interfere in any way in as far as uh, the investigations are concerned. President Chakwera has a uh, confidence in the National Audit Office that they are going to do a good job in as far as these investigations, in as far as the investigation and the audit uh, are concerned. As I said, that uh, it is the desire of President Chakwera to make sure that independent bodies, they do their job independently without any interference uh, coming from State House or from the President uh, himself. So. Uh, further questions in as far as 6.2 billion is concerned. I, uh... Thank you so much, Brian. I have three questions. Um, the first one quickly connects to your uh, response on the uh, 6.2 billion audit. The president made uh, directives as, as regard this issue. The first directive was within 48 hours, clusters have to submit their reports, which did not happen. Then the president also directed that within a month, this audit report should be ready, which has not happened. Uh, should we say people are defying the president's directive? Uh, secondly, uh, the other issue that I also wanted to find out from you, um, previously you had indicated that the president is at Mpundhama because the state residence is under renovation and of course we're also told that most state residences are in bad shape when the president had just been elected he was at area six's private residence before he went to state house and we were meant to believe uh, that 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 time the state residence or state house was under renovation we are also told in government that when a new occupant goes to state house or when there's change of power change of leadership 
uh, these residences go under renovation. I want to hear from you. Did this not happen? Is that all, Sija? I think, let me give you space. I, I will come with the other question later, uh, just for others. Let me pause there for now. Thank you very much, Mr. Chitete from uh, Nation Publications for your two questions. The first question is uh, in reference to the 6.2 billion audit and you are asking uh, that the president had indicated that uh, he had given, uh, is it one month or two months to the national audit uh, to make sure that this is done. Uh, as I said, the president believes in the independence of uh, these uh, uh, organizations, including the National Audit Office. What the president said, and I want to uh, be clear in as far as the, this issue is concerned, the president said that uh, the National Audit Office should do this job within 30 working days. The National Audit Office should finalize this audit within 30 working days. Whether the 30 working day started the following day or not, you might want to refer this issue to the National Audit Office. That's what we can say. So whether the 30 working day is finished or not, the relevant authorities that can answer that question is the National Audit Office. But the one month or the 30 day we are talking about here is the 30 working days that the President gave to the National Audit Office to make sure that they complete this audit on 6.2 billion as far as the 6.2 billion is concerned. And I think that answers the question on whether they are defying the President or not. But the President said 30 working days in as far as this audit is concerned. And as far as the President is concerned, he has not yet received the audit report uh, from the National Audit Office. The other question is on uh, uh, renovations at uh, uh, state house or state residences. Yes, there were minor renovations uh, that took place uh, just before His Excellency occupied uh, Kamuzu Palace. Uh, the maintenance that is taking place here is major. And as I said, we are talking of the house that the head of state and government occupies. We, I may not be independent enough to comment uh, in as far as what the works entail, because these are issues that borders also on uh, security of the president and also the security of the, the houses that we are talking about. Just as I didn't want to mention also who is doing these renovations, but what I can confirm to you, Mr. Chitete, is that indeed there were minor renovations that took place before uh, Pre President Chakwera occupied Kamuzu Palace. But the maintenance works that are happening, uh, happening now, they are major uh, maintenance works that could have not been done uh, within that short time when uh, President Chakwera was elected. Next question. No, Brian. Yes, Peter Makosa from uh, United Kingdom. You have the floor. Uh, announcing or started starting to implement retrenchments, which has created anxieties and spelled doom for workers and the jobless alike. What exact plans does uh, the Chakwera administration have in the short, medium, and long term to restore hope for the many youth and productive people that are idle and jobless? And as an extension, do we have any blueprint that can help us as a country project, track, 
and measure how many jobs will have been created and by when. The second question is uh, on uh, Ag Malawi Agenda 2063. When will the infrastructure projects commence in Malawi in line with that agenda? The third question is on COVID-19 and mental, uh, people with mental health illnesses. Uh, as we understand, uh, COVID-19 has ravaged families and everyone else, not only in Malawi, but uh, on a global scale. Now, I want to understand what is it that the government is doing to ensure that people struggling with mental health illnesses such as uh, depression, anxieties, and all that. Uh, what help is in place to ensure that these people are safe? Because most, <coughs> in most cases, people with mental illnesses are neglected. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Makosa, for your questions. Uh, they are very valid questions. And I would like to uh, thank you for joining us all the way from United Kingdom, and you have always been with us in these meetings uh, since we went virtual. President Chakwera is committed uh, in fulfilling his promise of one million jobs, and uh, what I can tell you is that uh, President Chakwera, since he got into office, he has been meeting with different captains of industry uh, in making sure that uh, we find ways in which we can, uh, in which uh, his administration uh, can achieve uh, this promise of uh, a creation of one million jobs. What has uh, also uh, delayed uh, in as far as uh, this promise is concerned, you know that uh, uh, not only Malawi, but the whole uh, world has been hugely affected by uh, COVID. Uh, businesses have slowed down and uh, there has been uh, a lot of challenge in as far as uh, uh, businesses, uh, the way they have been run. Uh, but uh, the signs are showing that we are defeating uh, the, 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 this scourge and uh, President Jaquela is uh, very committed in uh, fulfilling this promise. He continues uh, meeting different uh, investors, as you heard also, uh, he's going to be meeting with a number of investors. Uh, he has also been meeting with a number of investors in making sure that we not only have companies uh, running as they should, but that they should increase their capacity and also uh, making sure that they employ even more. Uh, even here in Malawi, there are so many projects that President Chagwera uh, is going to launch, and we believe that. Uh, uh, through those um, uh, projects, a number of people uh, will be employed. But as we begin now to win the battle against COVID, we believe that the economy also is going to be freed and that more activities uh, will be done uh, that will allow uh, young people also uh, get jobs uh, in this country. But the major challenge has been uh, COVID uh, that almost... Uh, paralyze uh, the, the, the whole uh, economy, not only in Malawi, but around the world. Construction of infra infrastructure, uh, this issue is well ably handled now by the Ministry of National uh, Economic Planning, and the, under the economic planning, they have a board there, the National Planning Commission, uh, which is also uh, championing the same. And I would uh, refer uh, your questions to the National Planning Commission and also the Ministry of uh, Economic Planning. Uh, President Chakwera believes that uh, he may not be able to take everything uh, here at State House. That's why he has empowered uh, ministries and the parastatos to make sure that they run with the, uh, the vision that he has. Uh, he believes in uh, making sure that relevant authorities are empowered and they are given the much needed support in as far as running, his with, uh, running with his vision uh, is concerned. So uh, I believe that the National Planning Commission and also the Ministry of Economic Planning are best in handling uh, your question. 
Um, the last one on mental health. Um, it, it's a challenge that the country uh, is facing. Uh, the Minister of Health is doing all it can in making sure that uh, this issue is uh, addressed. Uh, I think there has also been a lot of increase in as far as uh, issues of mental health uh, concerned, also because of the depression that COVID has uh, had on the people of Malawi, and not only Malawi, but even in other countries. And uh, the Ministry of Health is doing all it can in making sure that we face this challenge um, head on. Next question. Okay, hello, Brian. Yes, please introduce yourself. Yes, my name is uh, Charles Nkoka. I'm uh, uh, issues to do with the, uh, the environment, which uh, the president actually addressed. Um, first uh, is the issue of um, uh, putting up a task, for, a task force. The president actually uh, promised to put up uh, a task force to look into issues to do with uh, uh, the environment, and that. Uh, Of um, uh, experts uh, from uh, various, uh, you know, multi uh, sectoral uh, uh, areas that include water, natural resources management, climate change, mining, and uh, energy inclusive. But then, is six months down the line, we have noted that uh, you know this task force has actually not been um, uh, announced by, um, by by the president. Uh, that's the first question. Uh, when is the task force going to be uh, announced to look into these issues to do with the environment? Uh, that, that is one question. Secondly, in the same uh, briefing, if you go to page 8 of that uh, press uh, briefing that we had on 19th of, uh, of October 2020, the, the president actually acknowledged that there is too much high dependence on, on biomass in urban areas. Uh, which is happening at the expense of um, ecosystem restoration. And he did mention, you know, the aspect that he wanted to, you know, leverage issues of alternative uh, sources of energy that can sustainably meet the demand exponentially rather than incrementally. But if you, you know, go back into the, you know, sector right now, you notice that uh, electricity has actually gone up uh, just uh, two weeks ago. Uh, you know, those that are buying uh, electricity um, uh, are actually paying more than they used to pay, uh, you know, a month or two ago. And secondly, the cost of gas has actually also, you know, gone up to close to 2,000 per kg, making it too hard for, for the average Malawian to, to be able to access, you know, these as, as, as uh, alternative sources of energy. And the fear is that uh, with electricity going up and, um, you know, gas also, uh, you know, uh, going up, you know, in terms of prices, it, it makes it a challenge uh, to talk about issues of uh, ecosystem restoration because obviously, you know, the poor in the urban areas cannot afford to buy gas at 2,000 watt per kg. Not even, uh, they are not connected to the grid. I, I don't know how, how does the president, you know, look into all this, you know, whole, uh, you know, issue with, fresh, with reference to alternative sources of energy and ecosystem restoration. Finally, there is the issue of the National Climate Change Fund. <clears throat> you no, know, this is the fund, you know, that was uh, set as, aside as part of the Environment Man Management Act. It falls within the you know, National Climate Change Fund. And basically, why we have the carbon tax right now is, is because uh, the whole idea was to have funds raised from uh, carbon tax and carbon levies uh, so that they can be able to, you know, um, uh, put in this account the National Climate Change Fund. Uh, apparently, this fund hasn't been uh, operationalized. But if you recall, you will notice that uh, since uh, 2019-2020, carbon tax was actually produced, I mean, it was actually introduced uh, as, as part of revenue. We used to pay, um, uh, you know, this, this amount at the road, tra road traffic department as part of 
uh, the certificate of fitness uh, arrangement if we take our Vemos Nail Traffic Commission. We haven't been told how much has been collected uh, since uh, you know, the funds were being collected as part of COF. But last year, uh, you know, during the, was it the budget session of Parliament, uh, the, the Minister of Finance uh, you know, made changes to say that uh, they will no longer be collecting carbon tax uh, from um, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the disk that they had arranged that will have to get it through environment, you know, water, and all these other sectors. If you add the total amount that they will get as part of funding from government, it's less than 1%. And the argument was that if we have a national climate change fund, you know, a bulk of this fund would be used to support, uh, you know, the sector. Uh, looking at the fact that Malawi is an agro-based economy, we're talking about, you know, a lot of agriculture activities, and we cannot do agriculture. Uh, if we doesn't have a sound environment, I mean, we need to have an environment that is more sustainable. Would you be in a position to, to uh, you know, advise when is the National Climate Change Fund going to be you know, operationalized and that the you know, resources are actually channeled towards uh, ecosystem restoration and addressing some of the issues that the sector is facing? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mkoka, for your three questions, and I know how committed you are in issues uh, to do with environment, and no wonder that this morning you spent all your energy uh, in asking uh, on issues concerning the environment. I wish I was able to give you answers on question number one and question number three, but I don't have answers as I speak right now. Um, we may be able to talk uh, on the phone uh, in the course of the day or in the week. And uh, uh, th these, are, th these are questions to do with the, uh, the task force you, are to you have talked about on environment and uh, uh, climate change fund. I also need to consult my bosses on these two uh, very important issues that you have raised. And uh, we can uh, engage uh, in further consultations and discussion in as far as uh, your two questions are concerned. But what I can, um, I can assure you is that President Chakwera is very committed uh, in issues to do with environment. And uh, he believes that we can do more and that's why he's also concerned with the, uh, these issues of environment. Uh, not only that, but also the establishment of a specific ministry that deals uh, solely with the uh, uh, environment. Uh, this is a major commitment that President Chakwera has in as far as uh, uh, these issues of environment are concerned. But you should also remember that before COVID, uh, President Chakwera was even going out uh, uh, in the country uh, assisting the people together with the Minister of Environment on the need to make sure that we are uh, environmentally uh, conscious uh, in as far as this country is concerned. The issue that you have talked about gas uh, is a very important one and is also uh, very close uh, to the issues that President Chakwera uh, is pushing on. Um, the Ministry of uh, Finance will be making further consultations on how best uh, prices of gas uh, can be further reduced. You should also know that the price of gas was uh, reduced in the past, but uh, President Chakwera uh, believes that we need to have a lot of alternatives in as far as uh, uh, gas is concerned. So, uh, very valid point, uh, the Ministry of Finance will be tasked in finding how best we can reduce uh, the, the price of, uh, of gas, and I believe that can be considered uh, in the next uh, financial uh, year. But your two questions are very important. I don't have answers at this point in time, but I will come back to you on the same uh, in as far as uh, uh, the way forward uh, is concerned. Next question. So, so, Brian, I, I, I wanted to come back to my question that I said I, I would. Is that, uh, is that Suzio? Yeah, Suzio, yes, 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 please. yes. yes. Um, back to presidential directives. I yes. go back to February 14, uh, where the president in his statement um, directs the SPC 
yeah. to suspend all cluster heads. And uh, from the president's statement, he said all cluster heads. Yeah. I have checked who the cluster heads are. There are over 10. I know somewhere uh, actually suspended, like, like the secretary for local government. I know it was suspended, uh, PS for lands. But then others were not suspended. I have uh, examples like the MGF commander, IG, Inspector General of Police, Director General of Immigration, Commissioner of Prisons, Secretary for Health, and the PS for Homeland Security. I have checked with these people individually. Um, they confirmed to me they never knew they were heads of clusters. But then I know they are heads of clusters, and the, and the information uh, from the list of cluster heads that we have, these are appearing as heads of clusters. Why were they not interdicted? Could this be seen to be uh, selective, selective justice in a way? Or oh, the SPC uh, missed the president's directive? Very good question, uh, Suzio. Uh, as you rightly say, the directive was made to the secretary for president, uh, to the secretary, secretary to the president and cabinet. He's the S SPC. He's at OPC. You can drive to OPC and ask him that question. No, no, Brian, you have been very unfair on that one. The SPC is one person who never responds to media queries. Um, I mean, this was a presidential directive. I thought from the president's side, you know, you'd also have a response. Otherwise, the SPC has a good record of not responding to press queries. What the president said is that all the controlling officers should be interdicted. That we agree, isn't it, Mr. Jitete? Yes, we do. My yeah. problem is you referring me to the SPC so, so that I'm, doesn't I'm, respond to I'm, media interviews. Yeah, I am, I'm saying that the president directed that all the controlling officers should be interdicted. And if there are some that were not interdicted, the best person who can give reasons uh, to why others were spared is the person who was directed to do the job. So this is why I'm saying the best person who can ask, answer that question is the SPC, because he's the one who was directed to do this particular assignment. And he should be able to have reasons why others were spared. If at all you are, uh, you are, you are, you are understanding is, is that others were spared. So the SPC should be able to give you reasons why others were spared. But the directive of the president was very clear that all controlling officers who handled uh, COVID money uh, should, be inter should be interdicted. And if there are others who are not, the SPC should be able to give you reasons why they were not interdicted. Would you help me, Brian? How do I get to the SPC who doesn't respond to media interviews? He has my questionnaires for over a month now. How do we proceed? This is a general concern. He doesn't respond to questions. How do we proceed? And this also reflects on the president. I need your help from that side, if you can. I will personally engage you after this interview to make sure that you have answers to the questions that you have. So uh, let's have further consultation between my office uh, and you, Mr. Chitete, I am here to making sure that all your questions are answered and they will indeed be answered. So let's take it further after this, uh, uh, this uh, conversation. I will personally get involved to making sure that your questions are answered by the office of the president and cabinet. Is that okay with you, Mr. Chitete? Thank you so much, Brian. So feel free to engage me further after this uh, interface. Let's take um, the last question for the day. Okay, Brian, Wanda yeah. here. Yes, Mr. Msisia from the Times. Thank you very much, Brian. And Ufuna and Fusen Jijewa, who didn't give the same in a way. Many Mayankas are 6.2 billion Kwaja, ya national, uh, I mean, ya audit, ya. Munanina would be at the Abasa Masuku 30, 30 working days, could he upgrade it to a minute? Now, the friend investor would be Mugudanta was a good state the working days. He see Diambe Mande, but a president of my uncle's son. See Diambe Mande, a minute man would be the same would be nearly 30 working days. Does it imply that the 30 working days did not start on a Monday after the president has said that? If I don't invest in the presidential directive, 
Sito ufuna di kalimu situasyo ni hodea president aziti kuya mkulansi nitu zintu zosa jitika Antu nkuma unanga dikuti mwina pali kudeli la president alibe mpavu weni kweni Pamene presidential directive di weno kaya mpavu wambili zile mege zedwa Kuda antu ziziwona kuda president ali siriasi Kumansu antamina kula ntita ma directive zamene wa kumveste sa siriasness Ya zintu zimene zikuti zite Ni mafuna di jide kili yeba mene kum number one Number two uh, Ada imisa po Mauje ni ma, ma board ni ma parastatus Ma parastatus Chifuwa jote ya mauna kuti Sizi maenda kuhino kumansu uh, Mauje ni matenda ni ma procure mene Kongo sanka ma board ya acha Kondinde kutita jitakirie rabo ija Chifuwa jote rabo idagalibu Kali zidagaduga be ma parastatus imu Nga kali kutitida sanka ma board ya Na mwone gabe mkujiti gabe zonya santu Kupanga be zonya zemba zemba Tupanga popo chani pofuni sisa kuti Tujitakirie rabo menada ya mkulira president Zigo mkwambiri uh, Mr. Msisia, chifuwa cha mafunso wanu, amene mafusa mchijewa, mafunso ufunika kwa mbiri. Uh, pamene President Chakwera anapeleka directive kunina kuti uh, audit ijitike. Uh, ndi mafuna ndinene kunina kuti, mwonga menina nena mchingerezi kunina kuti, uh, anana kuti audit imene ijitike pata ta, uh, pasa na tema siku thete. Ndipo ni nafuto kuza mchengerezi kuna nakuti uh, 30 working days. President Mwenana Yankula, aku National Audit Office, anayamba kukira nshito that same, day, uh, that, that same uh, the following day. Kuhone tseta kuna nakuti uh, nshito, zimenala mula president ziteke. Kuma the 30 working day, ma, masiku 30, amene uh, president chakwere, anala mula, uh, zimenenda kandiku yanka ni kunena kunena kuti Siti kuziwa kuti masiku fete wa ata Amina anga yanke funsori menero uh, Fete working day Ndiya national audit uh, office Ndipo inu Ma office a national audit Mkwaziwa mkwaza kwa funsa President Jekwera Anani na kuti audit ijitike Pasa na te uh, masiku fete Ndipo Poyanka funsolano national audit office Ida kalandichidwi Chomvera zimene president Jekwera Ananena Kwa makodima siku fete o ata, funso limene, anga yangi ni a National Audit Office. Funso lajuwi ni lo tatira limene mwafunsa uh, uh, um, sisia uh, was to do with, uh, uh, was to do with uh, boards, yes, my board, my board, yes. Uh, funso limene ni lo funika kwa mbili. Ni mafuna ni nene zimene president ni jagwera ana nena. President ni jagwera ana nena kuti. Nshito, yone tseta kune na kuti, uh, we should clear the rubble in as far as maparastatos are concerned. Monga president amene ama tata malamulo, who governs by the rule of law. Siti kwembe kezele kune na kuti, president jagwera azimba mafoni kuparastato, kutikuwa 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 president jagwera ama gwinitsa nshito malamulo. Ndipo malamulo wende tseta uh, mabodi, maparastato, uli mmanja mwa maboard. Adane naso po sanka nduna, po sanka uh, ma, ma members a uh, maboard. Kutina kuti board yemene si watandiza a president jagwera. Kuti ma, ma board wa adzienda mwa ukada uro. Adza wajota. So president jagwera believes kutina kuti ma board akukwila nchito yao mo sata malamulo poone tseta kutina kuti tichite clear the rabo yemene inalipo mabodi wa siya na siya na. Ndipo mabodi amene saa watandiza a president ya kwera. Kukwira nchito yimene kuwena kuti mabodi ma parastetu wa kuenda buini. President ya kwera said right from the beginning kuwena kuti mabodi otero aza wateza aga wana kuti saa watandiza. Kuta asankia ntuena amene ako za kumutandiza president ya kwera in his agenda of clearing the rabo ma parastetu. So um Ni mene tinga yankire, kunena kuti President Chakwera is very committed uh, in making sure kuti the rabo is cleared. Ndipo mabodi amene saa tandiza President Chakwera in, clear, in clearing the rabo, they will be dissolved. So that we have competent people who can run these boards efficiently. On the 6.2 billion kwacha, panamveka so ma report kunena kuti anduna other information. Ananena kuti uh, report la national audit really ku treasury. I engaged the minister of information this morning 
you are going to see someone that he did not mention that. Then mango funa ndipempe to the members of the media. Kuti when we are quoting people, our sources, let us be as factual as we can. Kupa kuti tinga sokoneze uh, information. So the Minister of Information, Ona Bokazako, uh, has told our office, kuti kuti he did not say that the National Audit uh, Report is with Treasury. On that note, we conclude uh, this week's edition um, of the State House Brief. I would like to thank you all most kindly uh, for being with us today. We will meet not this, not this coming Monday, but the other Monday. Uh, on behalf of uh, the State House, and indeed on my very own behalf, I would like to thank you once again for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian, the Press Secretary for the President. Um, I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank all the journalists that joined us from different parts of the country and beyond. Uh, also, just uh, a quick one to say that uh, for um, Suzio, she suggests that uh, you email Brian Banda, the, uh, the questionnaire you said you sent to the SPC's office, and you can email him at brianbanda at statehouse.mw. And uh, anyone else that was not able to ask their question may also do the same. So on that note, thank you very much, all of you, for joining us. And uh, we look forward to you all's participation probably, as, as Brian said, not this Monday, because we do, we're doing the State House brief and not the weekly brief. We will be back with you the other Monday. Once again, a very, very uh, you know, big thank you to all of you for being with us, and uh, have a great and fantastic week. Thank you. <laughs>